In his appearance and lifestyle, there was nothing to attract one's attention. But though he looked mediocre, he was a genius. The outstanding mathematician Lagrange stated that he was the greatest of all who lived on the earth. Side by side with Galileo, Isaac Newton is considered the founder of modern science. He was born in 1642 at the village of Woolsthorpe near London in the family of a farmer. He didn't know his father who had died before his birth and he hardly remembered his mother because she left her three-year-old son in the care of his grandmother and went away with her second husband. The traumatic fate of an English farmer awaited Isaac but his sensitive relatives noticed the boy's thirst for knowledge and helped him get education. At school, Newton didn't make good progress, but studied very well at Trinity College. Being a first-year student and a poor man by birth, he had to serve older and richer students, and that, at first, darkened his collegiate life. In 1665, England was affected by a plague epidemic. To save his life from the epidemic, Isaac went to his native village, The farmers who lived in the neighborhood saw that the young man wasn't eager to be engaged in farming and considered him an idler. This lazy bones of the Newtons only throws stones and twirls pieces of glass round his hands, they said. However, it was at that time that Isaac thought of his biggest discoveries in mathematics and physics. In Woolsthorpe, Newton investigated the sunlight and using the prism decomposed it into a spectrum of colors. There he discovered the law of universal gravitation. According to the legend, this idea came into Isaac's mind when an apple from a tree growing in his garden fell on him. Two years later, after returning to Cambridge, Newton got a master's degree and started teaching at Trinity College. In a year, he became a professor of mathematics and headed the Department of Physics and Mathematics. In Cambridge, the scientist continued his research on optics that he had begun at Woolsthorpe. In 1671, he constructed a reflecting telescope that impressed not only other scientists, but also the king, and the next year Newton was elected a member of the London Royal Society in the English Academy of Sciences. While working at the university, the scientists studied the laws of motion and the structure of the universe very hard. On the 28th of April, 1686, Newton presented the main work of his life, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy to the members of the Royal Society. In it, he stated the principles of classical mechanics, advanced the theory of the motion of celestial bodies, gave the explanation of ebbs and flows, and predetermined the development of science for the next centuries. During these years, the scientist also worked at the new mathematical method that we know as differential and integral calculus. Leibniz also investigated this subject along with Newton, though separately and independently. There arose an argument between the two scientists regarding the patent of the new finding. According to some evidence, the acrimonious Newton carried on the polemics that lasted many years in the tone which was insulting for Leibniz. In 1696, Newton was appointed as the Warden of the Royal Mint, and he moved from Cambridge to London. He was given the responsibility of re-minting English coins. Thanks to Newton, minting in England was put in order and he was given the lifelong and high-paid post of Master of the Mint. It put an end to Newton's straitened circumstances, but estranged him from science. Five years later, the scientist became a member of the Parliament, where he never spoke during the two years of sittings. The only phrase he pronounced in the Parliament was addressed to the servant. Close the window. There is a draft here. In 1703, Newton was elected President of the Royal Society, and he held this position for 25 years till his death. And in 1705, Queen Anne knighted the scientist. The word Sir was added to his name.
All his life, Newton was always busy, and his job demanded a good part of his time so much that he often forgot to have dinner, went to bed late, and didn't sleep more than five hours. He didn't often pay visits and seldom received guests. He didn't allow himself to have a rest or respite because he considered every hour that was not devoted to his studies as lost. While concentrating on science, Newton didn't pay much attention to his way of life. They said that having two cats, big and small, he cut out two holes of different size in the door. It didn't come to the mind of the creator of higher mathematics that one big hole was enough for them. Newton died on the 20th of March, 1727, at the age of 85. He was buried at the Westminster Abbey in London. On the tomb of the great scientist is a monument with the epitaph, Here is buried Isaac Newton, knight, who by a strength of mind, almost divine, and mathematical principles, explored the course and figures of the planets, the paths of comets, the tides of the sea.